Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome back on our lesson. In this session, we are going to solve the question on differential band break. A differential band break has an angle of contact of 225 degrees on a drum of 350 mm diameter. The break is to absorb twisting moment of 350 newton meters and the coefficient of friction between the band and the drum is 0.3. Determine the necessary force Fa for the clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation of the drum and the condition of safe locking for the clockwise rotation of the drum. Here we have B1 is 35 mm. B2 is 15 mm, A is 500 mm, and theta, which is contact angle, is 225 degrees. We list down all the information given in the question. Here we have contact angle, diameter of drum, twisting moment or torque, coefficient of friction, B1, B2, and A. This is the comparison between clockwise rotation and counterclockwise rotation of drum. If the drum rotates clockwise, then F1 becomes the tight side tension and F2 becomes the slack side tension. Then F1 is greater than F2. So, T equals to F1 minus F2 times R. However, if the drum rotates counterclockwise, F1 becomes the slack side tension and F2 becomes the tight side tension. Then F2 is greater than F1. This is because tight side tension is always greater than slack side tension. So, T equals to F2 minus F1 times R. We go for clockwise rotation. Since the F1 is greater than F2, So, the tension ratio formula is F1 over F2 equals to exponent Fv. We convert the contact angle into radian, then we get Fv is 3.93 radian. Substitute all the values and we get F1 equals to 3.25 F2. Then we substitute F1 equals to 3.25 F2 into the top formula and we get F2 equals to 888.9 newtons. Then substitute back the value of F2 into the previous equation and we get F1 equals to 2889 newtons. Next, we draw the free body diagram of the lever and apply the summation of moments at the pivot point O. Then we get the formula of actuating force Fa. We substitute all the values and we get Fa equals to negative 175.6 newtons. Since Fa is negative and less than zero, so it is a safe locking break. Next, we go for counterclockwise rotation of the drum. Since F2 is greater than F1, so the tension ratio formula becomes F2 over F1 equals to exponent Fv. At this time, F2 becomes numerator and F1 becomes denominator. But the concept is still the same, where the tight side tension is the numerator and the slack side tension is the denominator. We substitute the values into the formula and we get F2 equals to 3.25 F1. After that, we use the top formula to find the value of F1. The tensions in the top formula become F2 minus F1 because F2 is greater than F1. We substitute F2 equals to 3.25 F1 into the top formula and we get F1 equals to 888.9 newtons. And substitute back the value of F1 into the previous formula 
then we get F2 equals to 2889 newtons. Next, we calculate the actuating force FA. We repeat the same steps as before. Draw the free body diagram of the lever and apply the summation of moments at point O. And we get the same equation as before. After substitute the values, we get FA equals to 24.4 newtons. At this time, we don't need to determine the condition of the brake because the question doesn't ask. But if we can see in the figure, when the drum rotates counterclockwise, then the moment of friction force around the pivot point O is also counterclockwise rotation. But the moment of actuating force rotates clockwise around the pivot point O. In this case, the brake is self-de-energizing brake. Because the moment of friction force and the moment of actuating force are in opposite direction. Meaning that the greater force, which is 24.4, is needed to break. That's all for this session. You may continue to the next examples on short shoe and long shoe drum brakes. Thank you.